Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game one of a double header between the 1962 Pittsburgh Pirates and the 1962 New York Mets. This is Sunday, uh, April 15th, 1962, the first Sunday of the season. These are our finally, final two games of this Sunday, uh, as we will show you the Pirates versus New York. New York off to a good start, 2-2 two two record. Uh, the Pirates similarly positioned at two and two so we're looking at the lineup for the Mets let's go take you back to the main lineup screen now that everything is set it's going to be Harvey Haddix on the mound for Pittsburgh versus Craig Anderson on the mound for the Mets both men making their first start of the season it'll be Verdon in center Grote at short Skinner in left Stewart at first Clemente in right Leppert the catcher Schofield at third, and Mazeroski at second for Pittsburgh. The Mets lineup will be Richie Ashburn in right, Chacon at short, Mantilla at third, Frank Thomas in left, Throneberry at first, Jim Hickman in center, Choo Choo Coleman making a starter catcher, and Sammy Drake spelling Rod Keneal at second base today as uh, Neal is still out. Um, for how many more games? Neil will be back in the lineup tomorrow, actually, folks, on Monday. So he's out for today. So these two ball clubs are two and two apiece. The uh, first place team, uh, four and two, after Sunday's action so far. So the Mets or the Pirates, if they sweep this doubleheader, will have a share of first place. Without any further ado, let's get to our ball game. <clears throat> That is, uh, huh. That's a different Craig Anderson, I believe. <laughs> That's Craig Anderson from the modern Seattle Mariners, I think. Uh, unless he pitched for the Seattle Pilots, it's possible, but it doesn't look like an old photograph. Uh, and Bill Verdun leading off for the Pirates. So, <clears throat> Anderson on the mound. He's ready to de deliver to Verdun. Oh, and we're going to slip those around so you know who's who. Because our pitcher will always be on the left side when we see this screen. So, starting the game off, it's a 1-11 to Verdon. That's a ground ball to second for the first out. That'll bring up Dick Grote. A 3-6, and Grote has a base hit. Lines it up the middle through the hole. And Dick Grote, an East Steeler, is on first. That brings up Bob Skinner. Skinner so far, 250, no homers, two RBIs. A five, a four. That's going to be a grounded down to third. Mantia, a four fielder. And a 15 on the four is going to be an error on Mantilla. He boots it. And everyone's going to be safe. So first and second now for Pittsburgh. And Dick Stewart coming up. Dick, a 333 average so far. Uh, 18 at bats, he's got six base hits, one double and two RBIs. The pitch from Anderson, say one six. And that's a ground ball to short. Chacon's going to scoop it up, fire to Drake for one, on to Thronberry for the double play. That will end the inning and get Anderson out of trouble. So after a half inning, the Pirates leave two, fail to score. Actually, they leave one due to the double play and fail to score. The Mets coming up against Haddix. Harvey Haddix making his uh, first start of the season for Pittsburgh. He'll face off against Ashburn, who's off to a good start, 4 for 7 in his first few games. A 571 average with a triple and a run driven in. The pitch to Ashburn, we've got a 2-6, that's a pop out to second. Mazeroski roams over and takes it for the first out. I'll bring up Chacon. He's batting 267 with no homers and two RBIs and 15 at bat so far. And a 6. 7 is the roll. It's double 1 to 4, single 5 to 20. Chacon lines this one into the left center field uh, gap. Burden will eventually chase it down, but not before Chacon pulls up at second with a double. So Elio's out at second and batting next. Felix Mantilla. Mantilla batting 176, one homer, and four RBIs, and 17 at bats so far. The pitch from Haddix is a 6, a 3. Grounder back to the pitcher. Haddix a fielder 3. We roll a 15. 
And that's gonna be an error. Haddix can't get the glove on it. He knocks it down, drops it, and plays around with it. It's gonna be a one base error on the pitcher Haddix, and that'll put Runners at first and third. Antia a D Steeler. They'll be playing back looking for the double play here. Against big Frank Thomas. Thomas comes in batting 533. Eight hits and 15 at bats. No home runs yet, but five runs batted in. So a good start for Frank Thomas. That is not the New York Mets Frank Thomas. So <laughs> we're using an all-time player card set. And this is one of the dangers, apparently. <laughs> uh, as occasionally we're going to get guys with the same name. And uh, <laughs> Frank Thomas for the White Sox is not uh, the guy who played for the Mets in 1962. But there's no 62 card set yet, which is why we're using the all-time uh, 62 photo set, I should say. So if anybody knows of a 62 photo set for Strat, let me know. I'll swap them out. So here's Frank Thomas for New York. Four, eight. That's a double for Frank Thomas. Mantia is going to round third. He might be sent. One to 12 with one out. We're going to send him. A nine indicates Mantillo will score. So, a two-run double for Frank Thomas. Spurred on by a picture of a similarly named athlete later in... About 30 years later. And, uh... The Mets jump out to a 2 nothing lead. As I try to keep my train of thought going. Thomas at second with his double. And that brings up Thronberry. Thronberry just one for 13 on the year. It is a double, but he's batting 0-77. And 1-9, that means he's going to strike out here for the second out. So, Throneberry down, and that'll bring up Jim Hickman. Hickman, 462 in the early going. Three doubles, one home run, and one RBI in 13 at-bats. So a strong start for Jim Hickman. The pitch from Haddix. Going to be a 2-8. That'll be a grounder down to Grote at short. He will scoop it up and throw over to Stewart for the final out. But the Mets score two and leave two. And after one inning, New York leads one to nothing. <clears throat> Anderson back on the mound. He'll face Clemente Leopard and uh, Schofield. Here's Roberto Clemente, 429, one homer, four RBIs, and 14 ABs thus far this season. A 2-9 is going to be a grounder to short. Chacon will pick it up and make the routine play to Thromberry to retire Clemente for the first out. That brings up Leopard. No hits and three at-bats. He does have an RBI and a ground ball at some point. With a 5-6. Fly ball out toward left field. Uh, big uh, Frank Thomas roams over. And makes the play for the second out. Retiring Leopard. And that brings up Schofield. Schofield one hit and five at-bats on the season. Dick ready. A 2-2. It's a lofted fly ball out to Jim Hickman in center. He will make the play for the third out. And the Mets go 1-2-3 here in the second. As Anderson calms himself down. And settles in for the long haul. Pirates coming to bat. Excuse me, New York coming to bat. Try to extend their lead. <clears throat> so Haddock's to deal to Choo Choo Coleman, who's making his first appearance of the season. And that's a 2 uh, 6. A home run for Coleman. The first pitch he sees in 1962 for New York. He drives it over the fence. And the Mets now lead 3 to nothing. <clears throat> That brings up today's second baseman, Sammy Drake, also making his first appearance of the season. And then Haddix with the bitch. That is a 6-12. Ground to the second. Ground ball to Mazeroski. Picks it up and fires to Stewart to retire Sammy Drake, but we may have an injury to the pitcher here on the 6-12 roll. We will. It's a 14. Made 20 starts. 14 is an 11-game injury for a pitcher. He's limited to 30. So, yes, that is going to be the day for Harvey Haddix. The uh, trainer walks out to the mound, and Haddix is going to give him the ball. Something's wrong with Harvey, and he's going to miss some time. Total, Harvey's going to miss 11 games for 
the Pittsburgh Pirates. So let's just make a note of that on our roster sheet. They've already got Al McBean out for another few games. Now Harvey Haddix. Their number four starter. He's going to be injured for 11 games. So who will the Pirates bring, bring in to do some long work here? Uh, looks like it's going to be Lamabe or Olivo. Go ahead and bring in Jack Lamabe or Lamabe. I'm never sure. So, Lamabe. He's already pitched three innings this year. 16.2 ERA so far. He'll come in and pitch four Haddocks. So they lose Haddocks in the second. Lamabe is ready to pitch. And he's going to face... Well, Sammy Drank actually just made it out. He's going to face the pitcher Craig Anderson with one down and the run-in from Coleman Tomorrow. So it's a 6-9. That's a strikeout. Anderson down on strikes for the second out, and here's Ashburn. 0 for 1 on the day. A 2 8 for Richie. Grounded down to first. Stewart will take it himself. Step on the bag for the third out. But Pittsburgh with a big problem. They lost their pitcher for the day. They're going to have to exhaust their bullpen, but at least it's Sunday, folks. <clears throat> They're going to have to play carefully here in the first game because this is a doubleheader. Leading off for Pittsburgh is Mazeroski in the third. Bill comes in with a 286 average, one homer and five RBIs, and a 37 on this. A single one to 18 for a line out to third. Oscar. Oscar clawing at the window behind me, trying to get a squirrel. So a single for Mazeroski. And that's going to bring up not the number eight card for Haddix, but the number one card for... Mabe, and they're going to have to deal with him hitting right now because they need him to get some innings in. So he's going to try to sacrifice Mazeroski over. An 8. Our sacrifice chart indicates a successful sacrifice bunt. Down to first. Oops, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Going to be a 3 1 sacrifice. Mazeroski to second. As Lameba gets the job done. Here's Bill Verdon, 0 for 1 on the day. And that is a 3 uh, 7. Grounder down to third. Mantilla going to look the runner back to second. And throw over to Thronberry for the out. There's two down for Pittsburgh here. And Dick Grove to the plate. Excuse me one second. Wrangling the dog. And ready for the pitch to Groat. Anderson deals it as a 4-7. That's a single. No asterisks. Mazeroski. 1 to 13 plus 2 with two outs, a 1 to 15 to score. They're going to wave him on. And he's thrown out! A hell of a throw by Frank Thomas. To retire Mazeroski at the plate. So Groth thought he had an RBI, but Mazeroski thrown out for the final out of the inning. Pittsburgh leaves 1 and still fails to score. New York coming up in the third with a three run lead. I'll sip a little tea. And it will be uh, Ilio Chacon leading off. Chacon 1 for 1 with a double his first time up. A 6 11 here. Ground ball to first. Stewart's a 5. That's a 16. Yep. And uh, an easy out for Stewart. He grabs it and steps to the bag. Takes it himself for the first out. Mm -hmm. That'll bring up Mantia. 
He looks 0 for 1 with a run scored. Got a 6 7. That's a fly ball to center. Ferdinand roams over. And makes the catch for the second out. Frank Thomas up now. 1 for 1, a double, and 2 batted in the first time up. That is a 1 a 6. He pops this one up in the infield. <laughs> Groat going to roam over. And take it to retire Thomas and the Mets. So the Mets nothing doing in the third. We go to the fourth. New York with a 3 nothing lead. Here's uh, Bob Skinner. 0 for 1 on the day. He reached on an error. And a 2-5 uh, is going to be a single 1-12 to 12 or a line out to second. So the line drive, but right at Drake, and he snatches it for the first out. Skinner retired. And with one out, here's Don Stewart. Stewart 0 for 1. Thus far, a 4. 4. Going to be a grounder down to third. Mantia's a 4. 6 is the roll. And that's past Mantia for a base hit. Stewart on at first. And one down, and here comes Roberto Clemente. Stewart, not a stealing threat. Clemente 0 for 1 on the day. And how about a 4-7? A base hit for Clemente. Stewart, not speedy at all, a 1-9. to nine. He's going to stay at second. But Clemente with a base hit. The Pirates now have two men on. And Leopard coming to the plate with one out. Don's 0 for 1 today. Flew out his first time up. He's ready for the pitch from Anderson. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Line out to shortstop into as many outs as possible. So that's a line drive to Chacon. He's going to uh, flip back over to the second baseman, Mazeroski, to complete the double play. And that'll retire Pittsburgh. Excuse me, the second baseman, uh, Mazeroski's playing second for both sides, and I'm a little confused. <clears throat> The second baseman, Stewart, of uh, Walker. I forget. God. Who's playing second? Drake. It's Drake playing second for the Mets. That's who it was, John. Now to commercial. So I can get my shit together. Thronberry leading off for New York in the bottom of the fourth. Marv is 0 for 1 on the day. A 5-8 is a strikeout. Thronberry down is the first out here in the fourth for New York. Here's Jim Hickman. 0 for 1 on the day so far. Here's a 6 and 9. That's another strikeout. And Lamabe doing his job. Here's Coleman. Choo choo's 1 for 1. He homered the first pitch he saw on the season. That's a 1 7. And this time he's going to chop this one down to Stewart. Dick's had a few of these today. He grabs this one, steps on the bag, barely has to move. And it's a 1-2-3 New York Mets inning. Pirates to bat in the top of the fifth, trailing by three. Leading off for the Pirates, it's going to be Dick Schofield. Schofield 0 for 1 on the day. That's a 3-8. And Schofield draws a walk. Dick and E. Steeler, he's got going anywhere, and Mazeroski to bat. Bill, one for one on the day, singled his first time up. And there's a 6 12, grounded a second. Grounded to Drake, who's a four. Rolled a seven. That's going to be an error. Drake boots it, finally recovers, but can't make a throw. And there'll be runners at first and second, and again, most importantly, we're going to have to roll for injury on the pitcher on the 6 12. He's an injured one means he can have a short-term injury. A 19 means he could have a long-term injury. Uh, that could be 30 games. He's only got 14 starts, so yeah. Craig Anderson, the New York Mets starter, is going to miss 14... I'm sorry, no. He's going to miss 30 games. Sorry, Craig. So pitcher's dropping like flies here. Greg Anderson. 
Out for 30 games. He missed quite a few starts, obviously. And the Mets now have to find somebody to take up the slack today. They're going to rely on a Willard. Are they going to do that? Hunter. Kenzie. They're going to go to Ken McKenzie, being that they have a lead here. Hi, babe. If I can find McKenzie, there he is. He will come in to uh, pitch for Anderson. So McKenzie ready to pitch. Mazgorowski on first, Schofield on second, and uh, nobody out. Lamebs due up again, and uh, he's going to try to sacrifice again. They want to get another inning or two out of him. Hey! This being game one of a doubleheader. As the family yells at the fighting animals of the house. That's a seven on the sacrifice. Tires run out by the first baseman, runners advance one base. So successful sacrifice okay. bunt. Both runners move up. The cat scratches the dog, the dog yelps in pain. And the baseball game goes on. Bill Verdon coming to bat. With two men on, Pittsburgh trails by three. Burden would love to come through here against McKenzie. The pitch, it's a three, a six. Line drive, but right at Drake. For the second out of the inning. And that's the problem with giving one up, folks. Now you have to rely on Grote to get a base hit to knock these guys in. So McKenzie on the mound, ready to face Grote. Grote two for two on the day with two singles, however. Those were against Anderson. We'll see if his luck holds up. That's a grounder to a Drake. A five against a second base four. That's under the glove and into the outfield for a base hit. Both runs are going to score. And Pittsburgh has cut the lead and now trails three to two with the Dick Grote two run single. Here's Skinner. 0 for two on the day. And that's a grounder to short. Chacon will scoop it. Throw over to Throneberry for the final out of the inning. But the damage is done. The Mets lose their pitcher for about a month. And Pittsburgh scores two and now trails just three to two as we go to the bottom of the fifth. The Mets coming up. Remember, folks, this is the first game of a doubleheader today, so... Bullpen management is going to be uh, about, in this case, getting some innings out of these guys. So Lamabe comes out to face Sammy Drake. He's already pitched, what, three innings on the day. They'd like to get two more out of him, ideally. There's 3-3. Three, three. It's a ground ball down to Stewart at first, again. Chopped right at him, he takes it himself for the first out. Here's Ken McKenzie. He'll bat for himself as well. He's filling in for the starter. That's a grounder down to first as well. Stewart's going to pick it up. And flip to Lamabe for the second out. And here comes Richie Ashburn, 0 for 2 on the day. About a 1-4 for Richie. Home run 1-5, to five or a fly ball to right. That's deep. Out toward Clemente. He's backing up, running out of room very quickly. Ashburn hit this one on the button. It's gone. A home run for Richie Ashburn gives the Mets a 4-2 lead. We let you listening to the deafening silence of the crowd for a moment there as we took a sip of tea and enjoyed Ashburn's home run trot. Now here comes Elio Chacon. Chacon one for two. A double on the day. There's two outs. The Mets have a run on the Ashburn home run. A 2-4. It's going to be a base hit for Chacon. It gets down, but Skinner cuts it off and holds uh, Elio to a single. He's a B-stealer. Even with a hold, he'd be a 1-13 to go. And Mantilla coming up. They'll try to put him in scoring position. He's going to try to steal second. A 1. He steals it easily. 
Got a great jump on the pitcher there, and Chacon steals second. Mantilla to bat with Chacon in scoring position now and two outs. Felix 0 for 2. A 4, 7. Single 1 to 8 or a line out to third. That's a 4. That's going to be a base hit. They get it in quickly. Chacon over to third. Mantilla at first. And Lamabe is tired. So we're going to have to remove uh, Jack from the game. He did his best, but he's done for the day. And they're going to bring in uh, Diomedes Alivo. Alivo, good pitcher. He'll try to keep New York's lead right where it is and let his boys do their job and get him back in the game. Olivo comes in for the pitcher spot. No picture for Olivo. And it'll be Frank Thomas with two men on for New York. Thomas one for two and knocked in two on the day. That's a one, a three. Line drive right at Mazeroski. He has no problem with it. Pulls it out of the air to retire the side. So the Mets go down, but not before they put another run up on the board. And now lead 4-2. to two. So we go to the 6th. Both bullpens looking like they're going to go deep today. And Pittsburgh will come up with the intent of tying it up here in the 6th inning. Dick Stewart, 1-2 for two on the day. The pitch is a 4-9. That's a base hit. Stewart finds himself... On base for the uh, third time today, I believe, and Throneberry waits with him, and they have a conversation about what they're going to have for dinner tonight after this doubleheader. But it's a beautiful day for baseball, and here's Roberto Clemente. One for two on the day. It's a one, a three. He lines this one, but right at Mantia. You couldn't have hit it harder, but Clemente has nothing to show for it as Mantia snatches the ball out of the air for the first out. Brings up the catcher, Leopard. Flew out and lined into a double play his last time up. This time, he'll roll a 3-5. And that's a base hit. Right back up in the middle. Uh, let's see what kind of speed our uh, runner at first. Stewart has. Stewart's pretty slow, so he's going to stop at second. But the base hit for Leopard. And there's two men on and only one out for Dick Schofield. Schofield to 0 for 1. Walked and scored a run his last time up. How about a 3, a 5? He'll walk again. Dick's good at getting on base. And that will load the bases, ladies and gentlemen, against Ken McKenzie for Pittsburgh's all-time second baseman, Bill Mazeroski. McKenzie really hoping to get a ground ball double play here. The pitch is a 2-8. A line drive, but right at Drake at second. So a lot of hard-hit balls today, folks, that have been hit right at people. Mazeroski down, and that's going to bring up the pitcher, Olivo. This is an awful spot. You're the Pittsburgh manager. You want Olivo to get some innings, but you're going to have to go to a pinch hitter here to try to win the ball game. So Olivo will come out. And they're going to send up... Let's see. I think it's going to be Don Clendenin. It is. Big Don Clendenin comes to the plate as a pinch hitter. So Don, so far this season, uh, two for three in pinch hitting duties. And with the bases loaded here, the Pirates would love to see him come through against McKenzie. McKenzie on the mound. Ready to pitch. That's a 3-6, and he's going to get Clendenin on strikes to end the inning. So Clendenin retired, he'll go back and find a piece of bench to relax on, and it's going to be Joe Gibbon coming in to pitch for the Pirates. Gibbon replaces Clendenin, batting one in the lineup. So Pittsburgh fails to capitalize on the bases loaded situation. Kenzie gets out of trouble. And the Mets will come to bat in the bottom of the sixth with a 4-2 lead against the new Pittsburgh pitcher, Joe Gibbon. 
Given so far this season a no record, a three innings pitched, and an ERA of absolute zero. He'll face Thronberry to lead off. Thronberry struck out twice today. A six nine is a home run one to five or a double. This one's hit, and it's deep to right field over Clemente's head. Forget about it, folks. No chance for Clemente to get that one. The Mets with another solo home run, and Thronberry gives them a five to two lead. So here's Hickman. Welcome to the game, Mr. Gibbon. That's how it's been today. Hickman ready to go. Do as I find the dice, don't you know? Oh, wow. That went far, guys. Oh. Moving furniture to find a 2-8. That's going to be a ground ball shortstop. Grote picks it up, slings it to first for the first out. So one down, one run home, and here's Coleman, who's homered today as well. That's a 5-10, grounded a third. Schofield's a three. That's a 19 against a third base three. He boots it, and it's past him into the outfield. Coleman's going to be able to run all the way to second on this one. And Schofield completely misplayed that into the corner. So Coleman with a surprise double on the error. Not a double, but he's, he gets two bases on the error. And uh, Sammy Drake will come to the plate 0 for 2 on the day. That's a 1-7 ground ball. Second base B++. <clears throat> so the second baseman will grab it. Look Coleman back to second. And fire to first for the second out. Going to bring up the pitcher, McKenzie. With the noisiest background ever in this video. That's a strikeout. The Mets down, but another run in, and they lead 5-2 to two as we go to the 7th. <laughs> the birds twitter in the background on this beautiful day for baseball. You can hear the fans are making quite a, quite a ruckus in the stands, running up and down the stairs. And someday I'm going to have a big house with an apartment. Or a room, I should say, just for recording Stratomatic baseball games. It'll be a soundproof booth made to look just like a baseball stadium, looking out over my backyard, which will be a beautifully manicured diamond. But until such dreams come through and lottery winnings happen... We'll just record here in our little corner of the living room, surrounded by the sounds of everyday life. Now that we've waxed poetic for a moment, Pittsburgh will resume their pursuit of three more runs to tie this game here in the seventh with Bill Verdon coming up. Bill's 0 for 3. McKenzie, so far, three innings of work. Hasn't given up a run. In relief of the injured Craig. And it's a 5-10. Ground ball to short. Verdon. Chacon is a 4. A 7 on the 4. That's another error. Verdon will reach. So they get the leadoff man on, and here's Grote. 3 for 3 today. Two runs batted in. The pitch to Grote is a 4-12. Uh, fly ball in the center field. Hickman roams over and takes it for the first out. Verdon retreats to first, and Bob Skinner comes to the plate. Over 3 today. How about a 2-11? Grounder back to the pitcher. McKenzie's going to spin, fire to Chacon for the first out, and back to Throneberry for the double play. The 1-6-3. to six to three. Inning ending double play. Pittsburgh again fails to score here in the 7th. New York Mets coming up with a 5-2 to two lead. They're trying to protect. And uh, if they have their way, perhaps lengthen. Here's Ashburn. He homered his last time up. The pitch is a 2-5 ground ball to second. Mazeroski scoops it easily and fires over to Stewart at first to retire Ashburn for the first out. Chacon coming up. Two hits on the day. A double, a single, and a ground out. That's going to be a 3-4. That's a base on balls for Chacon. So Ilios at first. A B stealer. 1-13 to, to steal right now. Gonna let him try. An 18 means he is caught stealing. 
the old 2-4, as Leopard guns down, whoops, Chicone at second. So Mantia is still in the box, but now with two outs. How about a 6-10? Catcher's card X, that's going to be on Leopard. He's a 4. On 11 on the 4 is a foul out. So popped up behind the plate by Mantia. Leopard roams over. Squeezes in his catcher's mitt for the third out of the inning. So the Mets. One caught stealing, no one left, no runs. We'll go to the eighth. The Mets hanging on to this three-run lead. Ken McKenzie returns for a fifth inning of work, folks. And he'll be facing Dick Stewart, who is two for three on the day. Two singles his last two times up. He also grounded back into a double play way back in the first. That's a 2-9. He lofts this one out toward Thomas in left. Thomas measures it and makes the catch for the first out. Clemente to the plate. Roberto a single, a ground out and a line out on the day. One for three. McKenzie with the pitch, a 4-5. Grounds this one toward Drake at second. Drake makes the routine play over to Thromberry for the second out. That's going to bring up the catcher, Leopard, one for three on the day. He singled his last time up. Pittsburgh really trying to get something going here. They're running out of opportunities, but that's a 3-10. I just turned that. Leopard gets a hold of this one. He's going to drive it toward the gap in right center. Ashburn running over, trying to cut it off. And he does. He will hold a Leopard to a single. That could have gone all the way to the wall and been some real trouble. But Ashburn did a nice job and got in front of it. And holds Leopard to a one-base hit. Here's Dick Schofield. He's walked twice and flown out. Love to get on base again here. The tying run on deck in the fate in the form of Bill Mazeroski. McKenzie with the pitch, a 2-2. Schofield gets under this one and drives it out toward Hickman in center. Doesn't look like Hickman will have a problem with it, and he doesn't, as he squeezes it for the final out of the inning. No score one left for the Pirates. McKenzie with strong work today, in relief. Unexpected relief at that. And Pittsburgh running out of chances. The Mets will bat here in the 8th, and if they can hold it where it is, the Pirates will have to score 3 in the ninth to tie it. So Frank Thomas to lead off for New York. Once again, not that Frank Thomas that you see on the screen. That's a uh, picture of a player by the same name, as we use a generic picture set, until a 62 picture set comes out. <clears throat> that is Joe Gibbon, however, but he played for San Francisco in that picture, not the Pirates. Anyway, Gibbon ready to deal with Thomas. That is a 2, a 7, a grounder down towards Schofield at third. He will take it on two hops and fire over to Stewart to retire Thomas. One away here in the ninth. Pardon me, the bottom of the eighth. Brings up Throneberry. He's homered and struck out twice today. That is a 4, 8. He pops this one up on the infield, and Dick Stewart, having a very busy day over at first, will take this one for the second out. That brings up Jim Hickman. Hickman's grounded out twice and struck out 0 for 3. Given pitching very well here. 2-7 for Hickman. Well, he loses Hickman. It's a walk. We jinxed him, of course. And Hickman will be a 1-13 to, to go. We're going to give him a shot. He's going to try to steal. He's just in under the tag. Leopard got a good throw off. But the tag was, the throw was a little high and just the tag just a second late. And that's going to be a stolen base for Hickman, who's now at second. With two outs and Coleman coming up. Coleman steps back into the left-handed batter's box. He's homered today and reached on an error. That's a 2-4. Another chopper down to Stewart. He'll take it himself and beat Choo Choo Coleman to the bag for the final out of the inning. So the Mets leave one, do not score, but still lead by three as we head into the top of the ninth and the last chance for Pittsburgh to get something going and tie this game up. Ken McKenzie will be coming out for his sixth inning of work. It'll be a heck of a relief job, especially being that this is game one of a doubleheader. He's saving the bullpen quite a lot. So McKenzie will face Mazeroski, a pinch hitter for Given, and then Verdon to try to wrap this one up for New York. 
the pitch to Mazeroski, a 2-7. Mazeroski's going to drive this one the opposite way into the gap. Hickman gets over in front of it and cuts it off, but it will be a single for Bill to get things going. And Gibbons due to pitch. I mean, to, due to hit. You know they're going to take the pitcher out and find a pinch hitter for him in this situation, folks. So Gibbons comes out. Let's see who's available on the bench. It's going to be uh, Smokey Burgess, who will be catching the second half of our doubleheader, but getting some rest today. He is available in pinch hitting duties, and here he is, folks. Burgess, a good professional hitter, and a solid catcher behind the plate. We have to swap him out in the game as well. So Burgess comes in for Gibbon, with Mazeroski on. Burgess, so far, 4 for 12 on the season, 2 doubles, a triple, and 5 runs batted in. He's been a very... Successful hitter this early part of the 62 season, and he's ready to face McKenzie. Mazeroski at first. McKenzie imploring for a ground ball toward his shortstop or second baseman. Here's the pitch to Burgess. That's a 5-8. And never mind, says Mazeroski. He'll do it himself. He strikes out Burgess. Listen, it's tough to come off the bench and do the job when you're used to starting. And uh, Burgess coming in with a cold bat, and it showed there. He missed the curveball by a mile. That's going to bring up Bill Burden to face Mazeroski. I mean, to try to move Mazeroski. McKenzie ready. The pitch to Burden with Mazeroski at first. He hits it hard with a tin can. It's a single up the middle. Mazeroski to second, and that's going to make McKenzie's job a little bit harder. He's tired, and it's first and second. McKenzie's had enough, folks. It's one thing to try to conserve your bullpen. Another thing entirely to try to make sure you win the game. But they're going to pull McKenzie. And try to find somebody in this New York Mets bullpen that can get the job done. They're going to bring in Willard Hunter. Hunter, not everyone's favorite choice to wrap up a close game, but that's what we've got right now. Willard Hunter, he's even shown in black and white with that New York Mets hat on. Is this his first appearance of the season? It is his first appearance of the season in a pressure, pressure situation in 1962 for real. He was 1-6 with a 6.65 ERA. So Dick Grote comes to the plate after Hunter takes his warm-up tosses. <clears throat> Grote, three for four on the day. He represents the tying run. There's one out, runners on first and second. And here's the pitch from Hunter to Grote. That's a 2-8. And that's going to be a grounder towards Chacon, exactly what Willard Hunter was hoping for. Chacon flips to Drake at second and on to Thronberry. The 6-4-3. to four to three. Inning, ending, double play. And that is the ball game, folks. The New York Mets beat the Pittsburgh Pirates by a score of 5-2. to two. <clears throat> The Pirates threaten in the ninth, but they're able to get through it. Both teams lose their starting pitcher to injury. Harvey Haddix has handed the loss. He gave up three runs, two earned, and one and a third innings before suffering a game-ending injury. <clears throat> the win goes to Ken McKenzie, who went four and a third, six hits, no runs. Uh, the Mets allowed no earned runs on the day and win this game 5-2. to two. Pittsburgh had 11 hits, the Mets only 7. The Pirates with 2 errors to the Mets 3. We had a hitting star of the day for New York. Well, Frank Thomas drove in 2 runs with a big base hit, and Choo Choo Coleman and Richie Ashburn both hit solo homers to carry the Mets offense. Meanwhile, Dick Grote had 3 base hits and 2 runs batted in for Pittsburgh. We have another game this afternoon for the New York Mets in their second game of the doubleheader against the Pirates. We'll see you then. Until then, this is Joe from Strat Baseball History reminding you that every day is a good day for baseball. See you next time.